Hello everyone and welcome to It's Just a Podcast. Hi, if you think this is a film, it's not. It's just me talking, I'm about to press play now on House of Wax and talk a bit louder and turn it down. Um, House of Wax is one of them DVDs that just plays straight away. Now we're talking about the remake as there's quite a few House of Wax is out there, Wax Works and House of Wax originally, the mysterious House of Wax double feature on HMV Platinum Collection. Um, so I've decided to do this one without Carl McSorley. Um, it's a Dark Castle production. Um, me and Carl have been trying to do new podcasts for a while. It's just our shifts have changed so much and in all our free time we end up filming some of Carl's really good at his assistant, even though he's deaf if you didn't realise that, which is quite funny. Again, check out one of our uh, videos for um, frogs dreaming when I fell over in the lake and Carl couldn't hear us and I needed help. <laughs> so let's talk about this movie. Um, I went to pictures to see this um, as we get a bit of uh, boiling wax happening here and uh, the flashback and the pre the preload. Preload? I'm going to go preload. It's completely wrong. Um, there's a boiling pan of uh, hot wax is boiling away. Um, I was dating a girl at the time um, and we went to see Friday the 13th and which would have came quite closely next near to this because um, Jaden Panadelic is in both um, before he really hit big with Supernatural um, and I remember all she did was scream like with a, um, a jacket over her head it was quite weird um, so I've had this for a while and then I store a lot of my DVDs up in the attic and I bought this one at a charity shop because it's got the uh, embossed front cover of all the wax dripping which is a nice 3D effect. Um, so ever seen the light of day on Blu-ray in the UK and as we get this really drained back flashback of the kids and it's going to throw you in the misdirection you haven't seen the movie is like the bad kids, the one with the full face and the nice chilly kids, the one who's obviously been unfortunately um, surgically removed from the back of his brother's head so he's got half a face. Um, but it's kind of misleading you here and it also, it throws in the clangor that um, there's a third baby and I think that's down there, the possibly you can hear another baby screaming in the background. Um, Cause I watched this with my partner Britt the other week. There's one of the key things in the movie there with the uh, burns on his wrist, you know, the marks. Um, and Britain never seen it and again it's kind of like watching these films so there was a lot of films at this point that came out um, it was the remake generation the you know it's okay to go super go people want to see super go coming in the aftermath of Saw when people are reaching out for you know that kind of thing and I think this is not a bad little remake in its way um, obviously it's the one I kind of think where you know it's casting of that gener that type of movie as well. And I think what really like, has not let this movie carry ahead so much, fair enough, Paris Hilton's in it, but I think they could have had a stronger lead role in it. I don't know who you would cast it, but Paris Hilton, obviously, I think she's all right in this. Um, but I think like, it maybe a few people were in shows or there's enough there with the actresses here, I mean, Eliza Cuthbert, Chad Michael Murray. I mean, Chad Michael Murray is one that to do really well for himself, and but he normally finds himself in a lot of just Bruce Willis and straight to DVD productions. He's coming off the OC, wasn't he? Uh, Brian van der Holt, nice kind of name there. Paris Hilton right down there, and Janet Panaletti. So pretty much the the two people who are more famous from it are left at the end there. Rip Roaring, Sit Back and Sour the chills and frills frightening but loads of fun too four stars daily miller so yeah i was uh, yeah it was actually yeah good that there wasn't a company on this but again i sat there and i was thinking about doing one today and this just popped into my head so that's what we're doing and i've got a cup of tea because i'm not no longer drinking coffee so there's a football trip f planned for a road trip very similar to the start of friday the 13th i would say the the remake when they obviously end up having a camp. Um, this guy here, he has some very cosmic eyes. I remember seeing as he's busting out his Raptor Paris Hilton there. And um, there's something about his eyes. It's quite mesmerizing, his eyes, as he's uh, playing with his sat nav and 
you know, he's got the, the big car. I don't understand why they've got two cars. And that got me the other day. Because um, his car looks big enough for... How many is there? Paris Hilton. Yeah, they can fit three in the back seat and all the stuff. I don't know why they've got... No, no, because her brother's there. Chad Michael Murray, yeah, forgot about him. He's playing the drunken guy, kicking the golf on the floor. You know, there you go. He's angry. He picks on the golfs. Um, he was actually at a Liverpool Comic Con not long back. Um, apparently, John Panelli. He just he's pretty stale in this, and he, he look like he's wearing a wig. Um, the guy there with the camera is obviously from the scary movies. He was also in Meet the Parents, and then just seems to have disappeared. I can't remember the last thing I seen him in. So like the goofball side of kind of like um, looks a bit like characteristics of Jim from American Pie kind of era. Um, because again, you look at you look at like who you may cast in the kind of that time. There was a lot of stars breaking out there, but obviously TV shows in America were massive. I'm not into the OC, Nashville stuff like that, or um, Friday Night Lights and stuff like that. But there's a lot of actors who probably were in this and stuff like that. And also bringing in the home camera thing doesn't do a bad job. Um, at least it doesn't show you on screen the um, graphics, which you know you never seen like. Um, but I love it how it always makes film against film and digital looking bad and now everyone's filming on uh, out there, the digital side of it. Oh, it's got a radio. Now, I'm just going to have a look on IMDb now for what the cast was famous for and just shoot myself in the foot straight off. Um, as you got a little road trip. House of Wax. I think my last commentary was Bloodsport. So it's quite cool to do this around, we're in October now. So Chad Michael Murray, obviously, let's have a look at him, was mega famous for One Tree Hill, wasn't the OC, Cinderella Story, Freaky Friday, yeah, Fortress, oh my god, them Fortress films of Bruce Willis, fuck my life, surviving the game. Um, so Bruce Willis survived, uh, he's, he's been in a lot of stuff with Bruce Willis, but it looks like his biggest ones are that. Um, Paris Hilton. She's not really done much, has she? Repo the Opera, Pledge This. She hasn't done anything for a while, film-wise, has she? 2022 Paris Hilton, The Family Uber Eats. Yeah, she's just been quiet, I think. No, Alone the Night, Trap TV host. This is a big film for her. Um, she didn't do too bad. Obviously, we just had the, uh, the sucking the penis scene, which I've totally missed there, but anyway. Uh, Girl Next Door, 24. So again, the last who pretty much leads this movie was in 24. Um, uh, Love Actually, Bandit recently. Um, Goon, 2. Uh, Family Guy, He Was a Quiet Man with Christian Slater, Captivity. So she looks like she was quite a big part of 24. Obviously, the girl next door. Again, that was quite a big hit at the time. There you go, Trudy's House of Wax. Brian Vanderbilt is the bad guy. Black Hawk Down, basic, SWAT. So, again, he had some credit going into that. You know, Black Hawk Down, basic, and SWAT were two quite bigger films. I just don't think he warrants. I mean, he's quite creepy. Yeah, creepy is a bad I didn't realize my phone was on loud, actually. Sorry. Um, uh, John Abrahams is Dylan. That's the guy from Meet the Parents, Scary Movie, House of Wax. His, that's his top three films. He's kind of just fell off the grid from that. Robert Richard, and it's R I apostrophe. I don't know how to do that. Pretty much Coach Carter, House of Wax. Um, I was on the front cover of Queen of Hearts. So it looks like he's kept working. But yeah, as I said, like it's quite an ensemble little uh, cast. Um, and uh, Dewey. And we've also got Dewey Crow in here as well, um, who's probably uh, it's Damien Herriman, who um, you know he's the little hidden gem in this because uh, he's absolutely meant as Dewey, and that. So yeah, camp scene, a bit like Friday night. Um, Friday the 13th, camping out, um, use your headlights, your car, it's going to flatten your battery in it, engine run or whatever. Um, 
France of American football, obviously setting up that the, the brother of the two has a really good arm, through scholarship away for drink, he's a bit of a badass, uh, we've got the goofball, we've got one black guy with the amazing eyes, Paris Hilton, the blonde bombshell in it, and then the every go girl, and it's kind of like little, little Indians isn't it, who's going to survive and stuff like that, um, and you always put the guessing at the movie, um, but again, it's the brother and sister that survived to tell the tale, really. Um, which again, I think if they did this now, that wouldn't happen. I think normally now you get films where you the, the, the think you know the twist and you're gonna get it. You know, I think that's the thing now. It's like, rather well, than trying to tell a good story, you're looking at the twist and you're looking at the setup. There's a house of wax, and, uh, and why I picked this as well. I think it goes a little bit too far when we talk about wax, but we'll get there. But again, back roads America. Um, you know, sidetracks, the modern era that a town could be completely isolated and forgotten about and not even on a Google sat now, especially um, Google Earth. I recently went up the front door with a dog and Google Earth went past and obviously I sent it to my dad in New Zealand and there's me and Hira at the front door of Google Earth. But then a few weeks later it was gone, it was a new picture because obviously next door had the hedge cut down. And um, you think like, you know, how could you hide a whole town? You know, but again, because Google Earth would have to have it have to be on the map. But again, like uh, Hills of Isery's make at that time, you know, middle America, um, just like no service, um, backwater stuff. Even going back all the way to Deliverance and stuff like that, where you know, <clears throat> there's like I think you can be super unsafe in any environment. Um, but you think if you just look at like. Oh yeah, middle America. Or middle anywhere. It didn't have to be America, but it's just like, you know, where there's no one can hear you scream kind of crack. I think that's where it's, it can be quite dangerous. Like, so, and obviously here we get the whiff of the, uh, the kill, kill hill, what we say is the fucking dumping pack. It's, I mean, I think they would have smelled that by now. Obviously you've got a nice little uh, mini DV camera there. Um, they don't investigate it now, but obviously we get a unsuspecting visitor coming with his truck. All right. I wonder when uh, Friday the Phoenix was filmed. Let's have a look at Panoramic. Because I was oh yeah. Again, a bit of Blair Witch inspired here, I would say. Um bizarre camera footage just give the cast the footage the air camera you know what I mean um, and let them bond a bit because I think they bond quite well but I think that the struggle with like the grouping but that's what happens out of school you know what I mean it's not like I can still hear music I don't know why it's wrong I think it's my neighbour outside actually yeah I can play witch vibes here Um where the fuck's that music coming from? Ah, it's out the back door. If you can hear music, it's out my fucking back door. Um, so, Walker, Texas Ranger, he's in now 56 episodes for him. And not, it has no release over here whatsoever in the UK. Supernatural, 327 episodes. Wow, I knew it was a big series, but that's a lot of episodes. So fair play to him. Now, at the moment, I'm actually watching Dark Angel again for the second time, and uh, the other guy um, from Supernatural um, has just appeared in the first episode of season one. Um, and he actually gets killed, but then comes back as a twin, as an established star in the second season. So... The, the, again, it's kind of weird to talk about Supernatural, and here I am watching House of Wax, and then just seen that episode last night from Dark Angel, and God, they've just not stopped with that. So it was House of Wax in two thousand and five, Cry Wolf, um, which did the rounds quite a bit. Um, House of Fears, uncredited in that. Christmas Cottage, he's on the front cover, and wow, I bet he wants that erased from his resume. And then we've got Friday the Thirteenth. Um, 2009 so there's four years between this and Friday the 13th um, and I believe Supernatural would have started about then am I right am I right or wrong where the hell is Supernatural gone you did hear me talk about Supernatural didn't you 
it's completely disappeared from his IMDb. Oh, yeah. The supernatural artwork on IMDb has just literally changed in my hands. It's went from the car to the sunset to like a split faces. So Supernatural started in 2005. So basically he's got Supernatural just after this, um, you know, the pilot. Um, and then during the uh, break of film of the seasons, he's done Friday the 13th, which would have been a good move for the Friday the 13th remake. But I would have cast the other brother. Um, I think he's far better as an actor, but... Uh, look, I mean, there we go. I mean, we've seen a clip there as well with the hand tapping outside the truck and you see the scars. So you, you get the connection there to the uh, foreshadowing at the start of the movie, the prequel bit. Um, and obviously you see this guy's arm thrown again. He's able to put the truck light out, which comes back later on when they're up at his house. Um, but yeah. Just there. Looking dewy gloomed. Now, oh, there's the moon. So, Vincent obviously comes here and steals the camera. So, this borrows a bit from Blair Witch. I am aware of the original of this, and I'm aware that you get the sequel in the box set with it, but um, as I said, I'm not sitting here to try and compare. I am literally just creating content for the channel. Um, and enjoy doing this and obviously just don't get enough time to do it. I mean, it's not even 10 o'clock in the morning when I'm recording this I've got a full day in the end of the studio doing a music video After this so this can just potter on the background mastering rendering and uploading um, So you get some bit of a creepiness going around there obviously sleeping with the light on it's very clear um, That's very lit as well though um, Because mini DV cameras unless you've got that infrared thing or the night scope on it where it's all cosmic green. You ain't seeing shit on mini DV unless you've got some form of light with that. Um, it does pull on a bit of creep in this, but I think this film at the end as well has a couple of flaws, which I'll talk about as well. And I'm sorry if I keep you listening to me and you hear that. It's obviously I've got me, I'm probably just jumper up. Uh, let me jumper up. That still doesn't make no difference. And there you go creepiness dog soldier there creeping out the tent so they've left the headlights on have they left the cars run where the fuck's all that light coming from there you go get the fucking Bray Wyatt land I mean the fire's on but it's not like it's not giving you like that glowing fire look there's no flicker in it it's like a solid light is it the headlights there you go fucking creeping behind the car so it can't be that light if you can't see his head Plus, most cameras will have a light on it that era as well. Is that recording? You can see the red light. See, to me, I would have made this um, like the do in my little eye, um, where it's like literally this would have been a lot more fucking scary if it was cut in between fluorescent green when the eyes glow white, you know, in the infrared look. So the car headlights are off, so fuck knows where this light's coming from. Um, and I think that really works for my little eye. A um, little bit of a jump scare there, but yeah, I think personally that's what I would have done with that. Um, I find it very creepy, the uh, night scope there. And I think a lot of digital cameras don't have that, you know what I mean? Now it's just kind of like, I don't know how many DV could do it or why it was such a drop feature to see so in the, in the night, you know what I mean? And they've slept into like four o'clock in the afternoon or something stupid, like three, like it's somewhat ridiculous, like two or three o'clock in the morning. Uh, afternoon they've slept into like who the fuck wakes up at that time of day especially when you're camping you know like if you ever camped out and you wake up and it's like oh now going back to my theory here he's got oh, do... All right, so they do need an extra car don't they really for one extra person but again split the story off peeing on the bushes about to get the smell again Paris Hilton, all in um, turquoise. It's a nice car, that. You don't see any of them cars over here. The roads are not built for that kind of shit over here. I was talking and driving 
the other day in um like parking over here in the UK is terrible. Like there's no double air line, some fuckers parking on it. And like the roads are just so old, like um especially around here and they're trying to expand and it, there's just not enough land and obviously the landowners won't give up the land. Whoops, sweep, good fall here, move. And there we go. We start to get into the, the grittiness as is a kill pile of deers. Um that is absolutely grim as hell. Um, nice little pan up shot there as well. Um and obviously she sees the hand as well. Um pretty grimy. Getting a bit of deliverance vibes as well. Um which again you get that at the start of this. Um but you still don't feel at the moment I don't think you feel so isolated. I mean I know they've took a wrong turn and they've pulled off in the middle of nowhere and again we're dealing with the era where you know they do have a mobile phone but you know there's one in the bunch has it one guy has a camera and that's what it was like i was always a kid who had the camera and obviously you know phones where you used to have your nokias and so you could ring and have contact i mean i couldn't think of it how it ever over way but when you were younger you're like knocking on somebody and you know what i mean or like not knowing how to get somewhere because someone's never been and that was the kind of thing you know unless you could read a map and stuff like that but now it's just so easy Turn left and stuff like that. Here comes Dewey Crow from Justified. Um, if you've never seen Justified, I highly recommend it. It has just been a resurgence on Disney Plus for a new series, which was great. But Dewey Crow, um, obviously, he is a regular guest on the series and even has a whole episode, which is a bit like Crank. Um, it's 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 one of the episodes where they've went and had a bit more fun than they should have, and it's an episode where he wakes up without his kidneys and stuff like that, and he. You know, it's just a great uh, little little episode for him. Um, and obviously, in this is he plays a really good like hick in a way, isn't he? Um, and obviously, the twisted he and the twist at the end that he is the third brother um, as well. So, you know, is he innocent or is he let let lured them in there? And you kind of think like again, deliverance vibes. Um, and being a better group. That guy's eyes are cosmic like. I don't know what it is about him. Um, but yeah. Obviously splitting the group up. As only like half of them go to the town itself. Um, fan belt. I think Jaden is quite pushy here. Um, you know. <sighs> I think I think out of all of them, Chad Michael Murray's just nailing it. Like you're the badass boy, but again, <clears throat> do you cast him acting or do you cast him for roles? Do you cast him as a name or do you cast a say for example Paris Hilton, you know, flesh off the bat of one night in Paris or whatever that happened with that. Um putting her in a bunch a group of films, but it makes sense for the time. Um You know, great character actor there with uh, Dewey Crow. And again, it's to say, well, what, what, where do you go with it? You know what I mean? But again, I think when you cast them, it's getting the right group of people together, the availability, um, do the gel, do they not gel, do they suit the roles, um, do they carry weight, do they sell a market? There's so much you've got to think about where you go, oh, she's shit in this film. And uh, it is brutal to say sometimes about that, but it's more the case of like, you, you just got to unless you've worked on a movie, you're not going to understand, like, all right, this actor wasn't meant to be in it, this actor is, this actor was attached for so long, and getting there, you know, it's it's a process. Um, and then again here, you know, like, he's creeping on her, and, you know, I think Jane walking in front of it was enough, but then he's trying to hold the thing up, and they're trying to acknowledge that, and again, it's just, yeah. Chad Michael Mary fucking ripped as well. Look at that man. But again, Wrong Turn was another film at this time. We had recently watched that, and um, Brett was like, oh, there's six. And I was like, right, right okay, I think the six is sort of a weird remake. And I still tell you the funniest story ever, uh, and it's because we're quite into this, so this is between me and whoever the assistants to. My old housemate, Belle, who hates the camera, <laughs> um, at one point was dating a very, very pretty girl. I'm not going to tell you the name, but. 
uh, even I thought she was pretty when I was in school and stuff like that. And I was like, fair play, man, fair play. And we live together, so it's kind of like, you know, that mate's kind of, oh, you know, girls coming around and stuff. And he'd been out on a few dates, and he went to see Borat. I was like, all right, you know. And one night, I don't know what had happened, but I'd came home at the worst fucking time ever. They weren't doing anything. Um, I came in. I'd, I'd text and I'd text ahead and say, "Look, I'm going to come in and just go up and edit." It was pretty late on, and he agreed and that. He says, "Oh yeah, dude, don't worry," you know, because um, again, you live together, um, and works work and stuff like that. So if anyone's ever seen Wrong Turn Two, I walked in, I heard noises, I paused for a minute, then realised them noises weren't being made by Bell. I walked past the living room and there was, you know, the door was open. And I went, "All right." awkward silence as two people were absolutely hammering the fuck out of each other over a stump in the woods and i think it was the uh the the um, redneck backwater people and i was just like yeah this is fucking awkward and i said the bell the next day i says uh how did that go he says oh, i didn't pick the right film i went no fucking shit mate you know i walked in and it says you should be watching some romance you went to see borat the film you don't take if you want to see a girl's like an eight inch dick or whatever it is in the movie and stuff like that and it's just like jesus christ man i don't think it lasted too much longer after that but again it's a sign of time in the movies you know the saws the wrong turns uh and these ones in between bits like that like house of wax and stuff like that now i don't understand what he's doing here because obviously we don't have that many four by fours up here but obviously flipping the hubcaps and you know happen to change it but again it's an off-road kind of thing um, a lot of trucks um, just have a four wheel stick up here or kick it in the gear there but again it's creating uncertainty and the road not being there but the road being out and the hiddenness of it and the reveal of the town is kind of how it's been lost from the maps and stuff like that but again um, it's getting less and less more because people buy and um, up in, in in this country, uh, it'll buy a plot of land and put four houses on it these days. Um, I don't think people realise how big the world is if you've never been outside the UK. <laughs> like, and like shit like this could easily happen. Um, it's just vast and big areas and you know what I mean? It's, it's just crazy. So it just ears over, spitting great actor and it's a shame he's not anymore but that's him until like the sneaky reveal at the end really and there you go boom there's the town so as a town um this is the biggest thing i like about the film i like the idea that there's a the town hidden away there and you know obviously it's um a small little town Reminds me a bit of Dante's Peak there in a minute. There you go. There's the craziness of the fucking world when it comes to roads. Um, they're now stuck in traffic. Uh, need to get tickets. A uh, bit of a uh, judgment night. Amelia Westerved's vibes. Um, and it happens, man. It happens. Uh, we tr went to download this year to see Bring Me the Rising Headline. And I drove down. And it's about four hours drive. And got in fine getting out horrendous horrendous and it's just it's one of those things where it's the simplest little thing that's happened or nothing at all you like when you realize you get there and you go oh the fuck i'm there so a nice little town here um obviously kind of looks like the town they may using expendables obviously there's the puppies like oh puppies in the window you never see that now these uh, state loans, little service stations, little Beamish style thing. That's the belts. But yeah, um, they like the wrong turn though. Like um, you get to realise that they've been doing this a while and stuff, and you know, like. They're sitting there, don't have to pay any rent on that, and they've got it all down. There's the mobile phone. Um, they're not in any danger yet, so it's not trying to establish that they've got no service. 
There's a Pepsi machine there that looks far out of place. Like that. There's the woman at the start. Who's that looking? Baby Jane on the pictures. But this is all in the lure to throw the, the, um, the customers. Um, House on Haunted Hill was another film at this time. Um, that was there as well. There was a... Um, I was talking to Matt about this, Matt Fairley, and um, it, two seconds I'll tell you when he walks in here, because obviously he's the thing about, you know, the walk in to church, there's a funeral, and the one guy in the room moves, and you get that shot, and it's just enough to go, you know, it's wrong there, then he comes out, gives them a hard time, just for the crack. Um, we were driving up Kielder, me and Britt, and we, um, we had this beautiful sunny day, and uh, it's the first time ever I felt similarities to New Zealand and England driving to Kielder. You know, we just drove around the lake and stuff like that, and um, we followed this. There's a video on YouTube about the maze, and I got lost in this iron maze thing. It was pretty cool. There was a town there. There was a maze. You went down, and there was just something weird. And Brit says, what's the man? I says, look at this. I mean, there's a mass valley. There's a hill there. There's two lines of houses, perfectly done, like if you were doing Sim City. There's a school, there's a church, and there's fuck all else. There's no shop, there's no pub, there's nowhere to work, and it was almost like a settlement. And like I'm always going to have that image in my head because like. As I say, it was a cosmic sunset day, you know what I mean? There wasn't a cloud in the sky, and it was just, you know, these rows of houses, all identical. And, yeah, they had this iron maze thing, and there's a castle up in the hill, but there was nothing else that i seen, and it was just surreal. And that's the kind of vibe I get off this, you know. So he's uh, clearly tapped. He's the tapped one out of the bunch. Um... So, there now, um, he takes a bit of a turn here, you know, he wants to get in the car, he wants to get that, he's got the girl, you know, he's struggling, but, you know, kind of, at this point you realise, he's doomed. If you're watching this now, when you're watching it because of Supernatural, you'd be like, oh, he's in it, yeah, but he's doomed, you know what I mean? So... Back of the, some burning of the candles. I actually found it. Um, when we, I had to clean my grand's house out. I found this metal tub and it's old, really old. And there must be about 20 candles in it. And they're all like anciently old candles. So I want to do something with them. Um, so here's the carving. So Vincent is the artist. Um, as you see here, he is uh, practicing his art. It's dark, it's creepy. Um, as I say, he's quite very talented um, in what he's doing. Um, obviously, he's inherited it from his mom, so he's been the good one um, and how long he's been at this. But he is the thing, the house of wax. So the entire house is made of wax. The biggest plot hole in this movie is, how did they get all the wax? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And structurally... Would that not melt in the heat if you had a hot summer day or something like that? Or, you know, how is a door, a hinge? Again, it's a movie. It's just a movie. I understand that. But, you know, the house is made of wax. So Vincent's obviously downstairs. He's got the long hair going. Um, I mean, floors of wax, beams of wax. You know. But again, it's just a movie, and it's the mid, it's the early two thousands. So all right, cool, okay. yeah. So now we're in the set. Staircase becomes a big part of it later on, and these people here are obviously victims who have come past in beforehand. Um, this one's dead creepy, a really creepy him. I've been, it wasn't Madame Tussauds I went in Hollywood. Oh, was it the, ah, uh, I don't know, I think it was the, the not, the not official one um, I went to. And then went across to the uh, World of Illusions, the Hollywood things. Oh, 
Wax Indian. I could just start burning everything. Now, I would understand if he was like a smoker, but like, oh, he is a dog as well. Look at the dog. The dog barks and fucking runs off. But again, you see the dog with a dewy crow at the end as well. And again, that's a, that's a really first funny jump scare kind of thing. Um, and then she gets the first jump scare here. That's quite startling, but it's quite stupid at the beginning with her. She sees the reflection of Vincent looking through the window. And he's got like this weird, um, obviously the mask on it as well. Um, and all these creepy like insides. And then he takes the piano. See, at this point, I think Vincent's looking going, oh, well, he sat at the piano. That's why he's going to end up with the piano. Um, very crazy octopus thing, crazy. And then here we go, boom. No, it's not boom yet. Vincent's the painter. It's a reflection in the window. Vincent is everywhere. I mean, the glass is not going to be made of wax either. What the company is this? Warner Brothers. And there's the chairs again, like Vincent and the chairs. And there's another hint there because Vincent doesn't have the armbands on. But why they would be there, not downstairs. And boom, there he is, creeping through the window. Quite startling, not knowing what's going on. Um, and again, the mask there. So again, Scream. Um, I know what he did last summer, Urban Legends. All these films are only a few years prior to this. So again it's kind of like you know hide who's the reveal who's the killer um obviously in this situation it's, it's separated twins um and they're just nipped in a way, you know what i mean um but yeah but there is a good thing but i think it's later on where vincent's actually standing in a shot like this and then he moves i think that that comes later on um, I think that's really scary, or it, it's not coming yet. I don't know who gets it first. Um, and he's outside. What's going on? Don't know. Peekaboo. She's blonde in there, the girl next door, isn't she? Yeah, they're definitely made of wax, are <laughs> Burn your way through that. fucking sinister like but again the mom could have been doing this but as a passion project because at this point you know you don't know what year the mom died or anything like that so and again it was established that it was done earlier on again what were the mining there you go someone could say well the mining town they were doing were mining for wax and earth core and you know what i mean there could have just been an endless supply of wax not needed why they settled there you know what i mean and that one's just melted a bit oof another jump scare run quite a small set really though for some of that look huge uh it's quite a little little kind of place there double piss But the guy, um, the goofy one, he's not in the other ones, is he? He's, um, uh, meet the parents. I mean, yeah, there's warrant why he wouldn't be in the second one, but he just seemed to be in quite a few things then. He's looking at his IMDb, jumped off. Look at that, though. She's looking through her uh, CD flips. I've still got one of them in my car. Fucking nipple twister. Oof. There you go, everything but, so it's not surprised who's uh, cut the timer belt. Every tool for the job. It's a really impressive, um, if you ever go to Beamish Museum in the North East, there's a really impressive old school garage. Um, when you go in and see everything all like that. 
make stuff work. I remember my dad's garage over here in England. It's just like, you know, a junkyard from hell, tools everywhere and that. Now, because he's built rally cars and he's it's all like cosmic, everything has its place and stuff. No dirt, seems reasonably clean. <laughs> How would you make a 16 belt fit? So he's got a bit of a Johnny Cash look kind of going. Um, yeah, I definitely got like a uh, Johnny Cash look for that there. Obviously left the money on the tail. Should cover it. Got them up the house, deliveries. But again, we're quite far into the movie and we've had no death yet. There's a lot of building up and I think once it starts, it's not going to stop. Um, obviously, probably one of the most brutal things in the movie is when she, her finger comes up and he chops her finger off. I think that is one thing that gets taken away from the film is, fucking hell, you didn't see that coming. You know what I mean? It's, it's at that era where, you know... the. It's like going back to the Friday the Thirteenth, where they would have a good gag, or they would have a good gag at the, like the twitch of the deaf nerve, the double uh, skewer in the bed, and you know, like they would build a lot of, lot of the scenes and everything around just so they could get that in a movie for the shock value, you know. So people are going to see this. I mean, I remember when I was going out with that girl. Like, obviously, we had a, quite a few dates at the pictures, and um, saying that like it's four years difference. It might not, it's not the same girl. It's not the same girl. No, it's not. It probably would have been Tamar. Um, I would have been earlier on. Or um, we used to go to the pictures quite a lot as groups. So it was right there. So it's not the same girl. It's not the same girl. I remember being in the pictures seeing this with a girl. So anyway. Um, hi, house on the hill. <laughs> bit of a cycle thing going on here um so again at this point in the movie you don't know if he's doing the double switch here um you don't know if he's um who he is he's mentioning the family um vincent's running around um he's got the mask on so you're not really sure and this is the twist coming because she gets put in the car, he goes in the house, he's never seen again. And then she reels out there, so time passes. I think he does enough job good enough job to like go alright. He's alright. He might not even know what's going on. Unless you've seen the movie before. So yeah. House is doom and gloom. But again, it's a Warner Brothers movie. who have obviously been around for decades making movies. I recently just watched Gone with the Wind. That's Warner Brothers. And I always remember, like, at this time, Warner Brothers were very popular on the heritage. But, you know, obviously, there was a lot of horror movies remakes at this time as well. But I can't remember. It was Gone with the Wind, man. Imagine how long that commentary would be. You know, it's longer than Waterworld, the extended cut. And at the very end, frankly, my dear, I just don't give a damn. Which you would see trailered on everything. You know, when Warner Brothers did... It was the 75th anniversary when they did that massive collaboration. Like, you know, they did the Pearson change, the music, and John Wayne, and all kinds of stuff. And frankly, my dear, I just don't give a damn. And she starts crying on the steps. So, yeah. So, they're heading to the town. The other two there, so... At this point, you know, he's going to creep, goes into the room. Now, if I remember right, the father is like a, a practitioner. Um, I mean, you wouldn't just go snooping in some guy's house, um, especially when he starts throwing around this thesis of a, um, a horse and a thing. It's kind of like, you're just looking to get killed. Minging. That's really minging. I mean, not that you would notice that it moved. So she's sitting there. 
She starts now fidgeting, putting the radio on. Time's passing. But he's having the right snoop. What do you think you're not going to get caught? There you go, General Surgeon, Victor. There's some masks up there, dead creepy. It's a bit like my room at the minute. The fucking masks all start hanging from the ceiling. Yep. There again, like there. It's like snooping right. You are asking to be killed here. It's like. You know, clearly that room's just kind of being forgotten about. I mean, he's fucking whacking tools, hitting tools. Like, what, do you, what would you say to somebody? Oh, yeah, I just went to came to use your toilet and I'm just looking around your personal shit. But, again, um, we were filming a music video on Saturday and there's no public toilets anywhere. And because of the city, even when I went to Costa, had a cup of coffee, a bucket of coffee, and I've literally, it's the only coffee I've had in about six seven weeks but again we're having a break she just realized the headlights bust you know panic sets in um and you go to use a toilet oh out of order for customers only i was a customer oh but they're out of order i'm like fucking hell so yeah just go and piss in the bush unless you need to poo so lights go out um he's got his lighter i think has he got his lighter still so now he's like Let's play it. I can't see shit. Found the doorknob. It's locked. And obviously here comes a big thing. Obviously the floorboards creep up. And he gets his Achilles heel snipped. Which is absolutely horrendous. With garden shears. There we go. But again. There. Is it the mask? Is it Vincent? Because the long hair is definitely there. And snip. And the gush of blood straight out. That is just gruesome. Um, obviously, now he's just got his legs snipped. He does end up a pretty evil death. And he gets stabbed, doesn't he? Comes running in and stabs him. But then Vincent's got to get all the way over to the campsite, so... I'm not sure who kills him here. I think it might be the other guy. He just comes running out of nowhere, doesn't he? There you go, probably another Blair Witch. And yeah, boom. Again, you see the eyes, you see the mask. Are they both playing the mask thing? I think. That's the other guy. I don't think that's the. Uh, I don't think that's Vincent. Vincent. I think that's. I think that's one of the hidden things about the film. I think that's meant to be the other brother, not Vincent, because Vincent goes after these. I don't know. It's conspiracy. Dun dun dun. Because he's totally changed now. Uh, I mean, it's been about 20 fucking minutes. Ha! Huh. Got it. There goes the box. He's going to do the whole movie thing and he smashed the fucking window out. Phone, there you go, well, phone's out the equation. She leaves the voice message though. So. Ah, so this one's going pretty well. I am a bit snuffy in the nose actually. He goes flying here. Warmth, back fall. Um, gets herself stuck in the rock. A bit like a tremors. It's a bit of a tremors truck, that, isn't it? You don't get any kind of trucks like that over here in the UK. Uh, stuck on the little void there. Uh, can't get a phone. I 
literally pops up in the headlights suddenly. Rah! <laughs> That's a proper another jump scare. I mean, it'd be even good if, like, um, if he was there on the first pan, but then for the lights to come on, then it would be there because your eyes can adjust to that. There's a scene in uh, the new Ghostbusters Afterlife. Um, we've obviously done the commentary for that. That was the last commentary with Paul Ray, and if anyone's been missing Paul Ray, I think I've talked to Paul Ray and returning to it's a podcast when the new Ghostbusters eventually comes out. Uh, Paul's got a lot going on, um, and it's just timing. I think all the ones we've got recorded in lockdown was the product of lockdown, do you know what I mean? Um, but obviously me and Paul both work full-time at the same place, and we have alternative days off because of, like, only one person can really be off in a day, so unless the stars align. But I remember watching it, and one of the, uh, the terror dogs comes out, and it's in the shadows, and that brief moment when it's in the showers is scary. So at this point, right, okay, my theory's fucked now. Because here's Vincent dragging the body around underneath. Again, a bit Friday the 13th. So that probably was Vincent and his brothers down there. But obviously, um, Vincent's now taking care of... Uh, and so the mask on. But my theory here as well is, though, is the fact that it's taken the brother and his mate a while to get to the town if you know what i mean and like obviously vincent has paused there as well so obviously this guy's been drugged up he's about to suffer a very crucial crucial brutal death um even saw his foot in the heel up and i mean it's pretty brutal that obviously there's a dog um obviously the dad was a surgeon so these guys know how to really heal themselves. Um, and obviously, then all the wax. And obviously here, the wax. And this is where steve got the idea from. The wax his fucking eyes and stuff <laughs> for the Jackass film. Was it the film or just the TV show where he got everything waxed? I've had my beard waxed for a prank before and it's not fun. It's not pretty. Oh... It, like again stuff like that thought about and it's all about audio you know you know he's on there get the makeup on there cloth goes over his face the the, the initial pull and then month and he comes to town of life and this is where you start realizing the town is completely and utterly gooned now i'm just going to have a look on imdb for a second As the wax is about to get spread. Paris Hilton looks absolutely amazing on her IMDb picture. I mean, it's it's almost like a drawn black and white picture of her. I was stuck on me fucking screen. The days of AI and photoshopping. There you go. It's uh, even just in muddling away, like uh, it's terrifying. Right. Well, he gets waxed to death. Brian Van Holt is not classed on IMDb as Bo slash Vincent. So on IMDb. Vincent isn't credited as any kind of actor. Um, as she now gets to the funeral and realising everyone is wax, dead, and we get the realisation that the best looking one, the priest, is there, and it's actually the funeral of the man. But yeah, no one is credited as Vincent, so obviously you would think that Brian van der Holt would be classed as Bo Vincent, but he's not. Um, tape recording real to real going down someone on IMB just does, does, does not get it so let's have a look at some trivia if there's any trivia on here Carly's height changes throughout the film right okay um, so Paris Hilton was in Supernatural um, 
about an episode about a wax museum, so okay. Took 10 weeks to build the town. The film has no connection to the original House of Wax from 1953 in terms of plot. Names mentioned in the script, blah, 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 director. Yeah, practical effects, whoop, digital effects were on the wise. I need to talk really loudly because I need a pump, sorry. Paris Hilton, last we see with Tom. Oh, here. Brian van der Holt plays roles of both Bo and Vincent Sinclair undergoing extensive hair makeup and transformation. So he plays both. So I don't know why he doesn't say it on IMDb. I'm not going to go down the rest. Yeah, and I um, just read something interesting actually. Sorry, a quick, quick break. I need to go and get a cup of tea. Um, <laughs> in two prop break. Just remember when Carl's not there, you know, I can have a break. You know, it's easier just for me to stop. Anyway, um, and she's hiding under the priest's crotch. Uh, this was all filmed in Australia. <laughs> I was like, what, really? And apparently Kate Winslet was meant to be in it, really? Titan not good enough for your leg. But, yeah. 13 Ghosts was another film remade around this time period as well but this is a great this is a great shot here um again filming on you know um a location like that and you build a little town and you think about the crane shots and you don't have to worry about streets and using streets like that when you can isolate a project like the burbs um because i love the burbs just because it's all filmed on this lot and you can, you've got all the equipment you need to make shots. I still think this takes them way too much time to get there because now Vincent, in theory, has gone to kill Paris Hilton and that, hasn't he? So, so yeah. House of Wax. Yeah, but there's a lot of, when I've been reading online, there's a lot of people who think that obviously Chad McAmurray was cast as the wrong. Um, he has more chemistry with the lead actress as well. Um, and they maybe he's not a brother and sister, but maybe he's that they could have been like exes and that could be the new boyfriend and it's kind of that awkward social thing. But then in a 90-minute 90, 90 movie, do you have enough uh, time to explore that kind of stuff? 108 minutes, wow. It's longer than I thought. So yeah. Again, he's getting a bit creeping in here. Don't know what his motive is. So he seems to be, well, he, this is kind of rapey actually, really. I mean, it is, you know, um, two brothers. And Vincent's quite caring when you see Vincent, because obviously he looks to see if he's all right and if he can fix him. And obviously this guy's the guy with the rage. Um, and there you go, you can see, clearly shown that there's the marks and there's the vent. Um, this guy's just turn up. Yeah, get some tape on her mouth there. Trying to look at that creaking is. DVD players creaking the hell out of each other. But yeah, as I said, uh, there was a production lawsuit as well. Um, some had burned down. Um, it's the same director as The Shallows, which I did go and see the pictures, um, which I enjoyed. Um, Screen Factory's done a re uh, release of this in America uh, with a Blu-ray release. Um, this was he uh, heavily involved in MTV as well. MTV was really popular that era, and they did like a fly on the wall documentary from the the cast and stuff. I don't think they do that a lot enough. Um, I think obviously now it's easier to get a film filmed without the publicity um, because of social media, just absolutely everywhere. You know what I mean? So. Um, I mean, just recently the Beetlejuice stuff, it's just been everywhere, you know, everyone's got a phone now, everyone take a snap. Um, it can be out there in seconds and stuff like that, which, you know, it's kind of crazy. Um, 40 million to make it. I think they did well with 40 million. A DVD player's not like that. Oh yeah, so here we go. It glues someone's mouth shut, 
which again is like almost unthinkable getting a bit creepy um especially for a 15 um obviously it's been made for a 15 to you know a date night movie which it all should be um and again it's kind of like using cgi in little stages um but yeah that's pretty gruesome like but see this film i think it's very colorful up until it starts to get a little bit creepy um in a way it's, it's like you know something's not right but you don't see I don't think you think it's going to... Until he gets his heel clipped and then you've got enough time to recover. He's been waxed to death. You haven't seen he's still alive. We haven't had that bit yet because they're about to find him in a bit. But the fact that, you know, here... You realise they are right in danger. Because, like... And as the audience as well, you're like... Right, he's just glued her mouth shut for a start. Like, normally some tape, you know, I know. But chopping a little finger off here... Um, But I still think more the ex that she's not just quite over and the new boyfriend would have been a better direction than being brother and sister. Because again, I think if they did that, you know, you kind of feel like they wouldn't have, um, there you go, get that little pinky up there, like they wouldn't have obviously, again, who is going to survive, you know. There you go. He, he, he sees the finger. Fucking sixth sense. I would love like that. Again, again in America, like, we in England do not have basements like that. Here it comes. Finger's just about to go. Looks like he's tying his shoelace. Boom! Ouch. Every single audience member... That is probably the biggest jump in the film. And then her ripping her lips open. I think this is a very intense couple of minutes. You know, that is... Again, it's why I give this film a little bit of credit. But then I want to show you why I don't like the film in a bit. And obviously, you know... Here again. Eh. Breaking her lips open. Oh, let me DVD. It's like sending a fucking fax. Now, uh, I mean, he's locking the door. It's a fucking glass window. I mean, he had no problem elbowing the fuck out of the uh, car. Back door, maybe. I mean, in theory, could you not just pull up that vent and jump down there? Boom, found her. Safe. For now. See, and as well, when he's done that there, that would have been the perfect time to see them chairs in the corner not in the house of wax like the chairs should be in there like nudged in the corner with all the cobwebs on not in the house of wax and then there's loads of pictures on the wall in the background which again makes you think that he is like a, a serial rapist you know um kind of that that's his kind of i mean he's obviously the guy engineering the town kind of thing and then uh, this guy's about to meet his demise. I keep foreshadowing the House of Wax. I mean, it's got a big part at the end of the movie, that. Which gets a little bit silly, but, yeah. So this is the bit I was talking about before, when Vincent appears. Um, and it's quite I quite like the kind of terror. Um, as he looks around here. We've been here before, so we are familiar. So he is about to discover, obviously, his friend, now the pianoist. Um, but obviously just before that, um, Vincent is sort of kind of shadowed in the background. Um, no, he doesn't. He sees Thingy first. So he's moving a bit. 
So he's essentially still alive. And then his eyes move. You know, he's absolutely frozen. Like, I mean, imagine that kind of death. He's got no skin left. Essentially ripping off his skin and his face. And there, there's Vincent standing with your back on. Um, which is dead, it's creepy. And then a little CG effect there, moving in the eyes and boom, he's there. Half his face is chopped off. Goes the extra goal. I think the extra goal there, um, you know, he's, well, he's still not dead, is he? He's just had half his face sliced off, but, you know, now we see the plates. And now we really get to see Vincent as well, the mask on, and then here we go in the Creepville. And this guy doesn't really last long here. Takes a tumble down the stairs and sort of like the burning. Um, Crouchy here just fucking takes his head away. Um, boom, garden shears. No, it's two knives actually. And obviously, camera shot that looks like a dragon, and then just starts pulling the body away, doesn't he? So, and then wink the whole thing of your brain still winks, which it's not this movie, but um, there is another movie where it's um, shadowed that um, you can you have some couple of moments when your body's not connected to your head, the last pulsing of your brain. I think the suspense of him chopping the finger off to her and that it's a completely different kind of horror um, and that I think there I think that is old school Friday the 13th death um, you know the whole chopping that's something like you know coming off the I think it's a blare of I think the style of it the style of the movie to the cast it's in it kind of feels somewhat like odd anyway and I think I like that about the movie but at the time as well, it's the kind of thing between practical effects, but then coming off the the, the Friday the 13th and then going into the Saw generation. I think this is why this film stands well as one of the better remakes. I mean, The Fog came out remake around this time, and my God, I mean, The Fog remake is not pretty. Like I like I I not long revisit that and went, holy shit, it's it's pretty bad. So like remakes. You know, it's retelling them for a different generation, but it's like you can walk a fine line with a remake, you know, because if you're going to remake something, I think you shouldn't really be a fan of the original. I think you should look at the script as what you would interpret it, what you would want to do with it, and then kind of like, all right, this is what came before, and then have a clear vision of where maybe you want to go. Because there's no point, like, it's like why they've never remade Gone with the Wind. No one wants to spend that much time and there's not much of a story to tell there, I don't think. But, um, like, there's a few good remakes out there. Um, obviously, I've just looked across my room now and see that The Lost Boys, that's going to get a remake. To me, Lost Boys, The Tribe's a remake of The Lost Boys. Um, so, again, off that thing, I think it's a very fine line, but I think this is one of the better films. I know I've not seen the original, but again... As I'm saying that, I don't need to see the original because this is House of Wax. This is a different generation. And here we go. Paris Hilton going to strip off. Uh, I mean, it's a 15. We're not going to see boobs. Oh, well. But you think that they would have done it. I mean, she's, she's got the body, that's for sure. And these two have been quite isolated away from the movie. That's a very bit of a striptease moment. Getting the kisses on. And obviously, obviously, she well, she's, she doesn't know she's pregnant or not. So again, again, I think with that, it's also saying like, oh my God, would you kill someone who's pregnant? And of course, no holes barred when it comes to horror. No holes barred. Oh, I just going to get a counter money. Oh, the music. There's your, your old school phone. 
and then he gets stabbed in the neck. And he actually gets quite brutal death here. Um, as she actually lights the lantern. Um, and it shows over. And, you know, it's kind of an off. Is it an off death? Off goes the light. Oh, she's given up. I mean, he's only been out there a couple of minutes. Time's passing. And this is what's very creepy because in comes Vincent here. Obviously, I think there's, you know, it's it, again, we know it's going to be Vince. You can tell by the fucking hair. And on comes the light. Another very, very eerie thing. But again, has there been enough time from her stripping off to having sex? And there he is on the floor. He's stabbed right in the neck. And then just this bit, him walking across, boom. And yeah, that is a horrible death again. When I seen that there though, you kind of look at it and go, look at Friday the 13th, the remake. You know, the Jason character is very similar to that. So, um, and then she finds herself in this warehouse that's just miraculously appeared out of nowhere. It's not like it was foreshadowed earlier on. You know what I mean? They could have had a scene to establish it being there. But again, I love stuff like this. Um, you're talking about the stuff that's just been left. And this is be the mill that was shut down. I mean, it is foreshadowed. It's shadowed later on. That was a Mayan town that got just, oh, it might have been shadowed earlier on. But here she is in this mill now as well. Which could be a, a waxing mill. But this is obviously where they've been holding all the the dead people's things and all the phones um, obviously uh, wrong turn does a very similar thing to this all the camp and so and wrong turn goes a little bit more creepy when you see that the fact that you know there's kids memorabilia stuff there when they've obviously killed the kids as well um here comes the pipe of doom um i think paris Hilton's death is shocking funny catches you off guard that goes right through you but to me with that though it's too much like when he got his uh, thing cut before, but the whole idea of him being underneath, putting a knife through there, the impending thing. Again, it's kind of like, you've already seen that already once in this movie. So it's kind of a bit of a repeat. I don't know how you would change that earlier on. Um, but yeah, she's about to meet her demise here. She hides in the car. Me. Me. Run, do you not watch the movies? Run. So obviously kept caught a few movie uh, cars in the time, and obviously it's full. Been at it for a while. There he is. Some creepy shots, especially in the fish eye of the enhanced uh, rear view mirror there. And he's gone. Boo! And there you go, gets it in the face, damages his mask. Obviously, he's going to keep his uh, wax, wax fi fixy face. She's hopping, and now uh, she's about to die here. Again, something else that to me feels more Friday the 13th to where this movie was going with some of the deaths earlier on. But yeah, it. Woomph! And then the whole sliding down the pole it's a great death on paper um and at the time as well i think everyone would be rooting for paris hilton to be killed but then this guy here now filming but again he's found the camera he's happy with it typical lens cap there swinging away um it's not a bad little camera that for when it was done and the colour out of that like and then just pushing the foot down on it and pulling the pipe out it's just the next level thing like so we've got Bo and Vincent still left and we've now only got these two the brother and sister so it's siblings versus siblings at the end of this 
Um, but <clears throat> obviously Vincent is well aware. But Vincent seems to get back here in quite some time. So there's a passage of time. So that the whole bit before when she's about to get it on with him, he goes outside the chains of music. She puts a coat on because and then he's dead. I think there's not they could have maybe put a little scene in between, you know what I mean? Maybe they could have just had sex and it could have been after the sex, you know what I mean? Because he comes bow back with a bow by the looks of it. That's very dead creepy. It's all about the house of wax. Oh shotgun boom into the theater for the first time um what happened to baby jane obviously the creepy guy there Shh. and now playing on the movie there again as films get older and companies get older you know like it seems weird now that you would have Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs is what the Gremlins are watching, especially in that era of Disney and Warner Brothers. And it's just the rights and stuff like that. But I just kind of think if it better is the film. But there's so many loopholes about how to do stuff and the way to do stuff. and But yeah. Again, all these guys have done is kill anybody who's came anywhere close to this town or had any kind of involvement they've just disappeared and again let's talk about Corey Haim or Corey Favon they would have been a great choice to play Bo and Vincent um, at that time of like trying to get that resurgence in the 2000s I think like Bo is a very good character of if you've ever seen film and turn on the creep but I personally think Haim if Haim had really like kept his way around and not cocked up his Warner Brothers edition for Robin, he could have been Robin in Batman Forever and then could have like sort of like transitioned into roles like this and shown how creepy he could be. And you know, I often talk about this of like what if the the paths had been slightly different and now if the actually Haim had still been alive. Feldman's more than happy just to be doing his music and you know, making his money off his roles and stuff like that. But you've got to look at, like, actors who, you know, think of, like, in the 2000s, has had that lull where, you know, I can't think of seeing Bo in anything else, but they go, boom, off comes another head. And Bo actually gets a fucking crossbow in his fucking arm. And head destroyed. Oh, and just there, just like the maggots coming out and stuff like that, it's... A baby Jane staring in the background. And there, uh, not like running scared, he's just walked straight into it, you know. Um, and now he's got the bows in him. Two arrows, one quite close to the heart there, right? But is he really dead? It's gonna be one of them. And now he's got the shotgun. You know he's not dead. Kinda has a Bill Paxton kind of figure. Um it's another actor just reminded me of slightly there as well. Oh, I tell you what, he does. He kind of does look like uh, Shepard from uh, Stargate Atlantis. He's got that vibe, that look, that hair. There you go, Heidi's gun. Martin Short there on the fucking boom box. And uh, there's the miss again that was hitting it on who won it, but there you go. And just like the derelict tractor and stuff like that just left there for decades. You do see a lot of that up here as well. And then we're back to the house. So I think we're uh, coming to the, the end of this movie. Um, I still think these have more chemistry of like 
are we going to get back together and not get back together? I don't think... Did she ever find her boyfriend? Um, but then playing brother and sister, you just look like they're looking for a kiss and awkward moment. Are we getting back together? But not that. Um, I love some of the shots. Like that shot there, you got the transistor there. Um, them running up the hill. I love the shots before as well. And the Koreans and stuff. Um, again... Another thing I do like about this movie, now that I've read a bit more into it, it does feel a bit like the Burbs, where they've built a set, and once they're in there, they don't need anything else. You know, there's that scene with the road, which not mean they're in a field around the corner. It's a production, all filmed in like seems to be a nice little setup town. Um, you know, everything seems to just be filmed quite close to proximity, um, and that's what you would need you know set the cast up uh, the crew and everything in a hotel nearby and you make it work um and i like productions like that i don't like productions where you've got to be i remember fucking getting up and a whole day of production was dry in Tarusa, the other end of bulgaria just for a side street and a couple of shots we did all for location you know what i mean just so because it was cheaper to do that then take over a town over here in the UK and that's just crazy like you know I was talking about this recently on a, a video to, uh, about Robin Hood and how like he gets off the White Cliffs of Dover he walks past Sycamore Gap um, which is this has been recorded with the fall of Sycamore Gap and then he's in Sherwood Forest and it makes no logical fucking sense but unless you're from there you don't know that um, and that's again with movies and stuff like that so they're, they're back in the house um Hello, good old fashioned phone that, boink. Um, a creepy house. Very creepy house indeed. Hello. Hi, DVD player's fairly having its uh, meh, meh, meh. <laughs> Creeping around the guy's house. There's some guns. Or completely boxed in and stuff like that, so. Do they have any reference? Probably not. Baseball bat. Yeah, you're not getting that out of there. Good old fashioned locked. Pool table in the background. Love a fucking pool table in the house. And there we go, might get a bit of backstory going here. There you go, twins, local authorities chopping up. There you go. Controversial procedure. Now, the whole separation of the twins and this here now showing you that Vincent obviously is missing half his face and eye and it's kind of like a a prosthetic he's always worn, you know, um, obviously the baby's born together. How the mom would have survived that, my God, um, uh, given birth, Jesus. Um, obviously, Bo's back now, fully bored up. There's a couple of things coming up that, you know, I think one or the other, and I'll talk about where they come, but right now, you see, you now know that there's not two people, because at this point, they haven't been together, so you could look at this and go, and, well, what's going on? Is this guy just running around as two different people? Is he doing a Norman Bates? Because obviously this does channel a few psycho vibes with a house on the hill as well, and the dual personality going along. Hey, um, Abe, go in that other room. Um... You know, and then he's obviously doing the whole, oh, he's not going to be doing a John Rambo here, but again, doing this practical here. Now this will probably be CGI, but, you know, a good old practical effect, some blood squirts, realistic blood. I mean, that would kill, like, through the arm. I felt that. And then the one that hard. And obviously just snapping this off. See, there's that fucking horsey again. 
But see, he's creeping around now on the street. See, again, he creeps around and he sees that little bit of light. So we know that the trap door's there, you know, because it's a dark room and there's light on downstairs. Um, but here, the fact that he snaps it off, um, you think you want as much leverage as possible to get it out. Um, obviously, Bo has no idea. There's the clippers again. We know he's got them. And then here comes the truck back. So now we realize, okay. And then they've got the pickup. There's the car. Obviously, the bodies are dead in the back. She sees that they're dead. Um, there's a dog. I think um, one of the creepiest ones that wrong turn does when they're in the house, I don't know, is like when they're underneath the bed and all that. Wrong turn's dead creepy, I think. Sinister creepy. It's all under there. I watched uh, Idle Hands the other night, that's another good film. I just enjoy, enjoy it as a, a stoner film. I was pretty stoned when I watched it, like, I don't know as I do. Um, but yeah, baseball bat in hand. And obviously now he realises two. Two brothers. He's not doing the dual personality. And then if you look at there, Vincent's very like let me see kind of thing. And I mean I mean that I mean he could have a punctured I mean he's definitely got a punctured lung, he's got a fucking arrow through his fucking chest there. Um and then Vincent just starts burning his face there. Fixing his fellas of wax. Spoon. So again, there's no other actor credit as Vincent, even though that clearly would have been someone else, but he's that TVD pick. The shot for the toaster though, great, spooky, both people in, you know, again, really cool shot. Now she sees us too, so we've now got again two against two, sibling versus siblings here. Um Meanwhile, the brother's still snooping around the house. He's found the trap door. Um, obviously, now he's the photo on the floor, which is the giveaway that someone's in the house. You know, boom. I mean, you would see if someone's under there. It's a big fuck ass table. And now she's still creeping around the house. Or baseball bat. There's a brother. Another reason why I haven't been able to do many podcasts recently, because I only recently just uh, would direct the music video on the weekend. Um, I directed the music video on the weekend, and last night uh, I promoted a show in the malls, and I needed both cameras fully wiped down and obviously um it's the time it's you know what i mean it's it's just the stars of aligned to do this and get one out there you know what i mean i mean i really appreciate it if you got this far through the company of just listening to me waffling away um i just love to share the movies you know that will always be there me waffling away even though long gone at certain points you know long gone when i'm long gone and reflecting on life you know what i mean but here you go the, the puppies are fake um shows you how they can control the whole town um and again that's what's kept them going you know what i mean but how they get the power i mean over energy fuck and hell they'll be after them so i'm not going to go in on camera i've had a right nightmare with over energy the last year um and it's nothing to do with me <laughs> you know what i mean but how would they get the energy I mean, they obviously rob people, um, creeping through the, the mine in town now. It's a lot of work for two brothers, and here we are. 
they're hidden. And obviously here's the, the friend there. Um, finds the hat. Obviously he's feeling something that his mate. And obviously they've tried to put his head back on. He's been cast in a, a prop. That's a lot of work, mind, isn't it? To keep it all still. His fucking head's just being reattached and unattached. And... Yeah. And boom, off comes the head. And then again, he's going to feel like he's just killed him. You know, there's going to be no explanation. He's going now going to have to just live with that. He just pulled his fucking mate's head off. We know that his head was detached anyway, but point of view as well. Point of view of intending doom coming, um, which is really cool. Um, and here comes Vincent. And... Obviously him as well, like, he's fueled by what he's just done, so he's going to kick him, um, and it's it's a full-on fight here. Up comes the gas and power. Obviously this now starts to melt the entire, obviously setting the fire, which obviously now melts the house coming down here. So obviously these guys have got this, like, cave system probably beneath under all the town is obviously now we're... Uh, you know, we were in the house and now we're underneath the uh, house of wax and obviously that's a big fucking tub of wax. I mean, flames up, boom. Cuts Vincent off. And that table in front of Vincent now is going to play a massive role. And instantly already the house is starting to melt. Um, wait, show okay. here. Vincent, there's the chairs, and Bo, so Bo's name is finally seen, and now, if you didn't realise it, Bo's the psychopath, but by this point, and there we go, she sees her boyfriend. And he's still alive, <laughs> technically, and he's Bo. But at this point, you like it's one to say that Bo was the rebel as a kid, and that nasty bastard, but it's clear that you know Vincent's clearly disturbed, because Vincent's killed just as many people, if not more. In fact, Vincent's killed everybody. <laughs> I think uh, Vincent killed uh, Vincent killed Paris Hilton and her boyfriend. He chopped the guy's head off, and then he aye. So Vincent's killed everyone. So what's it trying to say about Bo? Uh, like you know, it's trying to say which one's Vincent and which one's Bo. Are we trying to say that Bo's the fucking one chopping everyone's heads off? But then no. So here we go. House starts to melt. Obviously. Um, we are in the final corner of the movie. Um, I forget who dies first here. And like, obviously it's speeding up. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it would take a little bit longer, but the place it pretty ignites pretty quickly. Um, which again, you build it, you do it safely, um, and you burn it for real. I think CGI fire, hate it. Hate CGI fire. I just don't think it's, you know, you, I don't think you can recreate something that's so natural. I mean, you, you can video games and stuff like that, but I think on film it just, you know, practical fire, fireballs and stuff like that, you just, it's unpredictable. So, yeah, stabbed in the leg. It's going to slow him down. Oof. And yeah, she. Caves his fucking face in right now with a baseball bat. Which, again, at the time, um, it's thrown you there because although her brother's meant to be the badass, you can see she's even a badder ass to fucking cave someone's face in brutally to death there. I mean, he's been... He's dead. He's, he's, there's no, he's not coming back right now. She has literally caved his fucking head in brutally with a baseball bat. And now we're just down to Vincent. So that is a brutal death. And, you know, Vincent's about to go and fucking crack his ear. So now we get to the stairs, which are melting, which, oh, just the whole idea of getting stuck and sucked into something like that, it's grim. 
Obviously, he just walks up there like he pulls on the he turns to the Michael Myers here, um, and a brother obviously been stabbed in the leg is gonna try to get along and come to help fight as the whole place is melting. Um, oh, that's gone in the bone as well. Oh, and that, I mean that's terrifying. Face is melting and shit. So here, she's, this is the first one I was talking about before. She shuts the door, she puts the cradle together, which there's a model of the two brothers together. And if you didn't get it already, now Bo's slipping through the floor here, um, which is cool. That could have just been the end of Bo. Um, and I think this is the only thing I just don't like. Um, this is fine, I would say, in a way. You know, just this is a bit of like, oh yeah, the Vincent cuts through the door, comes straight down, he cuts the... the, the the children in half as he would have done and again right okay that's an amazing shot and obviously a bit of cgi used there for the bars in front and that's the life and you think all right that's cool and then the whole here's vincent coming through the wall like fucking the shining with his face all melted that's all right you know that's fine it's the bit where he falls through the floor and lands perfectly in line with bore on the floor and it's just like fuck off you know, like Bo's just gone through the floor. He's fine. He's dead. And then from both the land on the table, it's just like, ugh. That's the only bit I don't like about the movie. But again, him, you know, his face, his face is melting as well. We know the twins and all the separated. Uh, everything's melting around. I mean, even the woman's face there with her teeth, and that's terrifying. Um, and we get to a bit of CGI now, but like the whole like he's going up the stairs. The whole, I mean, that's. A terrifying situation to be in. I mean, the eyes here, eyeballs melting, and you know, the practical effect of that. You know, and there's, oh. You know, she's trying to get in his good side. I know that you were the one, you were the good one. Went, well, fucking, he's the one murdering everyone, so fuck off. And then, oom, for brother's back. Um, chucks him on the bed. He goes flying for the floor, doesn't he? Um, And the face comes off, and then we see, obviously, the actor. Obviously, they've used CGI. They see, to me, they've used too much CGI in his face there. That could have been a nice practical effect. Um, obviously, the actor playing both, like, but um, that could be so much better, I think, practical effect wise. Um, obviously, knife comes out, and. She's who stabs him? No. Nah. So John Michael Murray hardly kills anyone. See, so she's killed everyone, and boom, he goes flying through the door, through the floor. They land on the floor, boom, and the brothers land together. And I think that is just fuck off. <laughs> like him going through that into the fire, that was enough, you know. And then he's dead. He's finally dead. He's just burnt. He's had the worst death in a way, right? He's, he's, be, he's been, you know, he's had his heel cut off. He's been waxed to death. His face has pulled his friends off. No one's fucking helped him. And at the end, he's just had to sit there and burn to death. Like, yeah. So a bit of CGI, quite a lot. As the whole house is sort of melting around and then yeah another problem with the movie let's claw, claw through the wall and come out the house of the wax sign but again we're talking 2000s you know and the hands come through again visually like minging boom and they're going to claw through the sign and get out get out quite quickly don't they some heat like and they just get out as the house is going down and like, oh has not aged well the the house on the wax sliding down and they just get out in time and the practical side of the practical effect they had will come down wasn't pretty and there we go they are safe house is gone The brothers again dry humping each other. 
going to wax and then really you know composite CGI shot there again do you need it no then just maybe it's like you know like them looking at it like it's enough I always look at stuff and going how would you save money and would it look good <laughs> and then the rescue parties here now Rescue parties here, there's a lot of people there, there's a lot of things going down here. This would be a fucking, honestly, the news on this. Uh, obviously, they found the camera, um, which Chad Michael Murray, I mean, Chad Michael Murray steals the camera um, from the police evidence, and you think, wow, well, can you imagine if you watch that back and you see, like, the deaths? Um, he's the sheriff, he's one of the only other people crowded on IMDb. Um... Again, a quick explanation how it could have happened. You know, the mining town's done, cornered off, the boys have just stayed there. You know, they've, you know, it's completely off the radar, um, being self isolated. Again, it could have happened. You know, again, it's it's based on time where it could have happened because now, again, go back to cell phones and sat navs and shit like that. Um, it's setting a movie or an event in a place where, you know, you don't want to sit there and go, that couldn't have fucking happened. But again, every day something happens now that people can't believe that's fucking happened. So again, it's been smart with a movie. Um, you know, the fact there's wax everywhere running around the streets, that's a nice little touch. You know, they're going away. Got his camera. Looks like a JVC. And around the, the DV series um, and yeah they mention that there's a third brother's about to come up on the radio you can hear the bin man's coming third brother come and then they look out the window and boom there he is Dewey Crow with the dog. So the dog survives. Dewey Crow's there. Uh, you know. I don't know what he's going to do now, is he? <laughs> You're like, I don't know what's going on. House of Wax still burned background. Bit of Dante's peak vibe there. You know, panning up the house there. And a nice little set. Fade to black. And, untraditionally, credits going from down to up. So I spent a bit of money here now from the Melton credits. I recently watched uh, Joe Silver's involved in this and Robert Zemeckis, by the way. That's the producers of Back the Future. Um, Rewatched Ghostbusters Answer the Call, as now called. And uh, my God, they must have spent some money on them end credits. Jesus. Um, as a movie, I think... Um, Production designer Graham Grace. That's the guy who did. Um, uh, Grace is the guy who did uh, Island of Dr. Monroe. So, obviously, filmed in Australia. Um, production designer. Yeah, I see. I do, I do absorb a lot of information. I think, you know, revisiting this the other week with Brit, I think Brit enjoyed it. Um, and I've sat there and watched it back and. I think it's quite a solid movie. The, again, I've expressed what I would change or how I would change stuff, and I think like you know, it. I think it needs to be released within the UK. I think this is getting lost. I don't see it on many um, on any. Uh, it's on online and stuff like that. But I think it would have benefited by a bigger star being Bo. Like I mean, again, I talked with the Feldman thing or something like that, or. You know, Josh Brolin was doing a lot of stuff at that time, like well, Hollow Man and stuff like that. Um, so you got your likes of your Josh Brolin, or um, you know, someone who'd fallen from. Say, for example, not for super fallen from grace, but then you look at like maybe it's Wesley Snipes. I know that's a massive stretch in that, but I'm just saying, kind of like if like Keanu Reeves and Watcher, you know, that kind of like act, grab an actor for that kind of time. But again, 
it is what it was and at the time for that amount of movies we've talked about i think it's one of the better ones to come out you know above the fog remake and you know 13 ghosts and stuff like that i think it it's got some great practical effects and again i'm just a massive fan of like the burbs of it how it's all been it's in the location it's filmed in the location um you can focus on what's happening you don't have to worry about a million things going along and you know i think it does great with the finger chopping to the, the, the how much it's suspense and the pain you can feel her ripping the lips to bits but then totally goes fry the 13th of flying poles and you know into the heads and the chopping off the heads so how many candles out of five i would say it's a nice solid three going on like if half a candle burnt down for 3.5 in a weird way um i'm not sure where carl would stand with that you know carl would probably come in and butcher it i think paul would have enjoyed it a bit more um but as i say it's been nice to sit down and do this obviously film this in october for obviously like a, a halloween one i don't know if i'll get any more done as i say i'm trying to get more done with carl but very 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 appreciated it of if you've stayed all the way through this comedy listen to me waffle away thanks for listening Goodbye. Oh, it doesn't have any air in bits, does it? That's the error. What would it? Because it says you don't have any. Wrong turn had one where the creep's still alive at the end, so. You know. All the songs. Oh, yeah, by the way, this had a very, very heavy new metal soundtrack for that time. Um, I'm just going to rewind here a second, right? Maverick Records did the soundtrack. We have Deftones on there. We have Chops, Disturbed on there, Prayers on there, uh, The Von Blondes, uh, Interpol, The Prodigy, um, Megastar, Sutterfly. I think the, the big ones have gone like Dirt by The Stooges. Um, there's a lot. Very new metal soundtrack. You go Marilyn Manson's on there as well. Marilyn Manson would also be in um, it's Sweet Dreams is very used as the start of the movie of House and Haunted Hill, which is the same production company as well. 2005, Warner Brothers. And is there a hidden ending? House of Wax logo at the very end. Boom. Now, if that was a modern one, you probably would have found some kind of end in there. But yeah, thanks for listening to this. Goodbye for now.